Okay, so this whole document, it's, so it's 14 pages, uh, is basically my homework for the PBE. Uh, I, I mean, I dropped a comp guide day one, but since then I've been working on this because everyone else has been working on their comp guides and I can't be bothered. So this document, which I will release when I do the, when the video, hopefully tomorrow, talks about every anomaly, uh, ranks them, talks about what it is for each unit, all, all that stuff. Uh, I'll just go through the documents top down and it'll be pretty straightforward. So anomalies. On 4-6, you have the option to place a champion into the anomaly. This champion gets a permanent buff, and yeah, you can re-roll it with gold. It costs one gold. There are 50, there are 60, but uh, this one is disabled. This is one of the broken ones, but there's other more broken ones that were not disabled. Because they weren't, I guess they're not as obviously broken. I don't know. Uh, Rerolling doesn't show repeats, so if you have enough gold, you can force certain anomalies. But it doesn't matter. So anyways, these anomalies are just buffs. So th they were told to be like like a fourth item, but they're kind of like... They're closer to like hero augments. These anomalies work for all copies of a champion. So basically, when you lock in a champion, like let's say you put a uh, Draven into your anomaly, this will affect all Dravens. Like this will permanently affect you. Or maybe it'll be like your strongest Draven, but like it'll be it'll stick with that champion even if you don't have them on your board. So you can't change it. The best unit to Anomaly is typically going to be your main carry or sometimes your main tank. Whatever the focus of your comp is. So in cases where you have like, uh, like let's say 6 Watcher Cogmaw, which is a really fat front line and then you have a Cogmaw. Uh, you want to focus on the Cogmaw because uh, your comp investment is very heavy on your front line. So you want to buff up your carry. Whereas if you have, you're playing something like Sorcerers, or there isn't really much front line, but there's a bunch of back line. You want to probably put your thing on the front line's wane. So it's it, like you're just putting it on whoever is the most important unit in your comp. Sometimes there's like really broken stuff you can maybe break from this. But generally, you don't want to roll too much gold. And you want to have at least a decent option. Like most of the time, you shouldn't have to roll more than like five to like eight times to get something that's like pretty good for your comp that might change when there's more set in stone stuff i mean this might change after i talk about everything but we'll see how things look after day one and so on so a couple anomalies uh that are still not entirely sure how this worked uh at the start this was a lot longer but uh, as i got to test out stuff is the shortest. There's, a, there's two that I, I saw a little inconsistencies with. Cosmic Rhythm. Uh, this is one. This is a very broken one. I'll, I'll talk about it later. But uh, it's not super consistent. Or at least I don't know how consistent it is. Because I can't see. I, I'm only one person. I don't have like a large network to test every interaction. But there's a lot of theoretical interactions where it would be broken. So. And there are some cases where I have seen where it's not consistent but like I don't know that works everywhere and then another one is touch of frost which is it has really tricky wording so I can go here to the list and this isn't not all these are updated but uh I mean the general I don't think this one's changed at all but it has some tricky wording uh when they die they stun the nearest target I haven't seen it like the stun work like just period but when it is supposed to work my qualms are if you kill the target immediately, the stun, I don't, I can't tell. I'm, I think I've gotten it like once, so I don't know. But this could be very broken. I just don't know enough about it. So anomalies that are generic enough to be picked off in. Uh, so as I go down, I have like for every every unit, like what the best stuff is. Uh, they have the top three and some other ones that are pretty good. And then here are like, all the other ones that like you could just pick pretty much any time if you think it's good enough and they're kind of sorted based on how situational they are so calling card and dual wielding uh calling card uh gives you a emblem based on the unit's traits uh so if you have like a a lux uh it can give you one of her two traits as long as the trait has an emblem for it so you can't get like uh 
Emissary. You can't get Form Swapper. I think all the other traits are, are fine. And then Dual Wielding. This gives you items. The items are just based on the recommended items. So uh, when you hover over a unit, it'll show you some recommended stuff. It'll just pick from those. So if you want uh, two free items, not bad. Uh, whatever. Uh, Fireball. This is a free ant uh, a free burn effect. Uh, it procs when your unit casts. It it can you can play this in any comp. Uh, however, I mean there's obviously going to be better options, but if you like desperately need heal, then this is fine. This section is tank. Just tanks. Most comps, if not all comps, have a tank. So. If you're okay with just putting something on your main tank and not spending too much gold, you should. Especially since some of these tank ones are actually like, like are actually pretty broken. So, yeah. Here you have some generic carry options. I think all of these are some form of damage amp or attack speed. Yeah, the these are damage amp. These are attack speed, uh, and this is an execute. All of them are pretty like solid options. Uh, some are a bit better than others. Depend like some are kind of comp specific, but like they're technically universal. Like you could play it in any type of comp, but the specific ones that you would take it are situational. Freestyling is trait dependent. So, like if you have a lot of traits, like it scales with the amount of traits you have. So, yeah, per activated trait you have. So if you have a lot of traits, it's good. Uh, let's see, bully is if you have a higher star level. So basically, you want to put this on 3-star units. And if it's not 3-star, it's not as good. And then... What's the other one? Comeback story, story scales with the amount of health you have. Like, your player health. So if you're 10 HP, it's high value. But if you're 100 health and streaking, you're not going to get much value. Or actually, if you're 100 health, you're not going to get any value. But yeah. Uh, and these are attack speed. And yeah, so... I'm not going to talk too much about what everything does, because that'll take a while. But, yeah. Uh, these are AD carry. Like, you can take this on pretty much any AD carry comp, if you have, if that's what you're running. Uh, yeah. These are, these are, I mean, okay, this one is like its own thing. I don't know. This one's weird. And this is for AP carries, generically. Like, there's, like, all of these have, like, like, there's more AD carry, there's more AP carries, but these are, like, the ones that are, like, pretty universal. Whereas there's others that are a bit more specific that you wouldn't want to take on every AP carry, on every AD carry, on every melee. But, like, like depending on who they are. Actually, this is not pretty friendly for most melees. Oh, uh, yeah. And then this is, like, an other category. Uh, In theory, good in every comp, but, like, they were, like... I'm not even gonna put. I'm not gonna put these here. I'm not gonna bait people into taking them when they actually have a lot of new ones. But yeah, if you don't have any gold and you have something that's like good enough that pertains to your comp, probably gonna be from this list. If you got something that's like BIS, which I'll talk about later, uh, then obviously you go for that. So overall tier list, uh, this is all, this is all sixty of them. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about everything. So the only ones that like sorted, the only tiers that are sorted are S and D tier, which are, so, like want to know what to avoid and what is, are really good, and I'll talk about why. The rest of these are, I mean, they're in the right tiers, but they're not sto they're not sorted within tiers. So like, the difference between like this and this are, I don't know, like, and I didn't worry about that too much. But S tier are like, and S tier are in order by how broken I think they are, and they're all broken, and D tier I think are not very clickable. So, yeah. Um, starting with uh, Cosmic Rhythm, which I talked about earlier. What this does is it allows you to... Instead of gaining mana, you just cast every four seconds. And, uh, yeah. That's broken. Like, I, 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 I hate to say it. There's just so many champions that, like, shouldn't be casting. Because four seconds is very frequent. So... There are a lot of units that should not be casting that often, and I will talk about that later. But yeah, I think that is the most... If you get a unit that can abuse this, I think it's just the most broken anomaly in the game, and it's not very close. So, 
Okay, actually, I'm going to talk about an essence from Navari because this is one of the broken ones that Riot did disable, but there are three others that I think are more broken. Uh, essence of Navori lowers the mana cost of the user each time they cast their ability up to a certain point. So it, I think it starts at ten percent reduction and it ends, it caps at fifty percent. I don't know where it is. It's somewhere here. Yeah. So this is very broken on units that want to spam cast and want to scale up. There's a lot of scaling in the sets. You have Dominator. You have... I mean, you just have a lot... There's a lot of scaling in general. And this set... I mean, this is just the best way to spam cast and it wasn't even close. Like, there are other... Anomalies that do similar things, but not, they aren't like nearly as good as as Essence of Navori is. So long as your unit you know, would actually like be spam casting, which, like I said, there are a lot of units that do want to do that. But let's talk about uh, the other two that I think are better than it. Uh, invisibility, yeah. Uh, as the name would suggest, it grants invisibility. Let's look. Where is this? Where is it? Invisibility. Its label is critical strike chance because it also does that. But every four seconds, you turn invisible for one second. This is an aggro drop. I didn't think it was an aggro drop in the beginning because there's no way this would be balanced if it were. However, it is. So, yeah. So it also has this effect that your next auto attack is a hundred percent crit chance, which uh is pretty decent for damage. But like, even without that, this would still be incredibly broken. There's actually a lot of units that can use this with like even without the critical strike chance thing so yeah uh having that safe speedy net is just really broken for a lot of units based on the unit's design like it's very easy to take aggro and then if you drop it like the unit is like pretty much immortal throughout combat until like maybe they're like the last one left this number i think is too low and there are a lot of units that can abuse this as i'll talk about later the other one is uh, Deep Roots. Where is it? Yeah, okay. So this is a tank one. This is supposed to be like a little quirky one. Uh, but uh, the gimmick is uh, not balanced. Uh, I think there's just complete oversight on what you can do with this. So uh, stats-wise, it's pretty generic. It's a bit below average, but uh, it's well-rounded. All around, like this is like a very nice pick because it gives you a bit of everything, but it's like whatever. But the main thing is uh, the unit cannot move and they pull their targets into range. Meaning you can pull enemies like close to you. Uh, so you, wherever you put your unit, its current target will be brought to it. Let's say you have a... So that's someone who can actually use this. Let's just say Trundle. And you have a enemy rel. And like some other some other things. Some other things. Trundle's current target will be pulled to Rel. So if Trundle starts here, uh Rel's already in range, so he'll hit that, but once there's nothing else in range, so let's say Rel dies. Set it if he's still alive, will be brought to Trundle. And this is very abusable because of one mechanic I like to call backline <laughs> moving your thing at the backline and kidnapping Units, pretty much any unit that you would want to 1v1 other units, uh, or not even 1v1, but you don't want to fight in the middle of the board, but you want to, like, like, you just basically put your, like, a good 1v1 champion here, and they just, like, shred whatever unit, and then they pull the next one, and it is very broken. Uh, there are a lot of single target champions that have risk in like fighting normally like that there's the, that's the risk of like being melee and like whatever but uh this removes all risk and it and i mean keep in mind other units can also hit it like you're out of range of the enemies but you are in range of your allies so as long as you're not gonna lose the 1v1 uh you can just keep pulling stuff and it is disgustingly broken uh however don't put that on the unit that would lose because then that unit will go and mess up your backline and you don't want that either but uh, yeah, there's exploit with this. I'll talk about that in specifics later. 
uh, comeback story. This is one of the generic damage amp ones. This is just the most universal. What this does is it uh, gives you damage amp based on your missing health, missing player health. It's not. Is it alphabetical again? It was like messed up before. Okay, it, okay. I think they fixed it again. So it's just alphabetical. Uh, five percent damage amp for every player health you lost in this game. It's not gonna have that much value early on, but you get this at four six. So let's say you have like fifty health at four six. That might be generous. Uh, that's already gonna be twenty five percent amp, which is pretty good. But I think this is best when you're at like one life, uh, where you either have two digit two digit health or one digit health. If you have one digit health. Uh, that means you are at 45% damage amp, which is amongst the highest of these other versions. Therefore, or you can take it in pretty much any comp on your main carry, and it, it's a good. Uh, if you're unfortunate enough to be 2-digit HP, you're at 40% amp, which is uh, still pretty good. So, it's still higher than the other damage amps on average. Like, the other ones, you have to do a lot of work to get higher... Like, this can go higher, but you need to be hoarding gold, and that's not good. But this, you don't have to do anything. This, you're just playing the game normally. And, uh, the closer you are to dying, the more amp you have. So, like, on your last life, it's just better than the other ones would be anyways. So, yeah, it is very strong. It's not broken, I don't think. But it's just way, it's just better than the others. Like, I say that these four were, like, the broken ones. And then this is just, like, normal S tier, like, fair, kind of balanced. Dramatic Entrance. This one's, like not that broken but it's like if it's like overloaded and like it feels unfair but i don't think it's like broken but i don't know okay i'll talk about this dramatic entrance at combat start you are not fighting and but after six seconds you arrive with 70 percent max health and you stun all enemies for 1.5 seconds first of all 1.5 seconds like to the whole board is pretty big like there are in the past there were some traits that were dedicated to doing that so like, you're playing with 7 rebel, but for free. And, yeah. A secondly, 70% max health is similar to almost all the other... It's either... I think it's just more than most of them. I think, what, the one that gets higher is, like... What's it called? Fortified? Yeah, it caps at more. I don't know if this is 5 times total, or if it's 5 additional times. So, But, like, at best, if it's 5 additional times, it'd be 72 which is marginally more, but it takes longer to do so. And you don't get a board white sun. So basically this is like a lot of other ones, but better. Uh, the caveat is you get this after six seconds, like the unit isn't on the board. So if you are solo frontline, you're just griefing by taking this because you don't have your frontliner. But if your board is going to survive at least six seconds, or like if your frontline is going to survive at least six seconds, uh, Put this on the main tank and then they are they have a, an anomaly that's better than pretty much all the other ones and you have a board wide sun which is uh very strong nothing wasted uh this is pretty much uh set a admin not quite but like basically when units die uh oh, it's got something like wasted yeah uh when an ally dies uh the unit gains 100 of that the, the unit that died's mana so like if you have a trundle that dies, whatever its mana was, uh, set now has that much mana additionally. So if trundle had 40 mana, your set gains 40 mana. This can be broken in the sense that some this is a trait visionary which increases the amount of mana, but even not, that's a lot, that's a lot of potential mana generation for free. It's 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 much more reliant. Or much more reliable than other casting uh, anomalies. Like, I would say it was kind of close to Navori, but it was slightly le worse. But this is, like, still... This is, like, less consistent, but it's, like, about equal or potentially greater value. So, yeah, it's a fun one. Uh, Stone Skin is probably the best, like, generic tank one that you can take in pretty much any case. Uh, like, Dramatic Entrance has, like... A bit of a nuance but it's like very powerful stone skin has pretty much no downsides to taking you gain 225 arm and mr at the start of combat and then this bonus is reduced by 10 every second the thing is uh the point of a tank is to stall for your carries so uh 225 is just a ton 
like even if you like start like like losing all your value like if you live long enough it doesn't really matter so this making you so much more tanky than any other anomaly like just kind of guarantees that your unit's gonna at least last for like the first 10 seconds which is normally good enough and like even at 10 seconds you have 125 armor and mr which is still better than like other equivalent bonuses like anomalies so what this pretty much does is it pretty much just guarantees that this unit isn't gonna die early like it's still possible but it's very difficult that now this like this number is just too high i think or maybe they should make it increase decrease slower because by the time you get to the point where you lose your bonus like if you make it that far your tank has already done its job so like it's even worth putting this on carries in some cases. like you can put this on a carry and it would just prevent them from being killable pretty much so like if you like if you can guarantee a unit like has that much resist that for that long like it's just so strong and i'll like in comparison you have like you have bulwark which is another armor mr one but like look this gives 40 armor and mr and triple above 50 percent health so like at best you have 120 which is uh the same as uh this but like after 10 seconds or for the thing is on screen and that's at max value 225 armor and mr is like having two stone plates so you would like can be pretty much solo frontline this unit as if you were having two stone plates which is kind of absurd and then the last one is slow cooker which is uh a bit of a callback to league of legends arena where there's an augment that does the same thing or something similar and uh what oh, actually it's s uh deal magic damage it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a like a sunfire but like uh skills off health and the radius increases every six seconds which basically means after if your unit lasts long enough uh you're cooking the whole board and uh the thing about this is that you can heal off of this if you have any source of healing so yeah if your unit lives long enough they're kind of a problem it's not even because it's not even that this number is high it's that eventually you're just hitting so many things that if you have something to complement it like healing or something of the sort you're you're, you're just uh, immortal and a problem uh this is good on tanks it's good on carries that have healing like it's like kind of, like you have to have the spot for it but if you have the spot it is very broken and then okay a tier uh pretty generically good there's a lot that are in most comps you'll be okay with taking any of these if you have like the right unit for it uh b tier is like more average they're like maybe a bit more either i don't know they're just, i don't know I, I have just a b c tier like obviously a is better than b and then b is better than c and then d is uh kind of unclickable like there are cases where this can work but i don't think there's a case where it's better than other options you have so i'll talk about these in particular so you know what they do and why they're not that good uh first is hunger for power which uh you're basically consuming an ally for some of their stats uh consume the nearest ally gain 60 percent of their, max their health and damage this seems like a lot but it really isn't like keep in mind you are losing a unit for this but uh 60 percent like okay if you're gonna sacrifice a unit it's probably not gonna be an important unit because if you're sacrificing an important unit you're trolling so 60 percent of the health of a unit that isn't that important isn't gonna be good for a lot of comps like it's not gonna be that much health and then the ad isn't gonna be that high uh this set doesn't have that much ad like there aren't that many traits that give a lot of ad so you're just gonna have a lot of base stats you're not gonna have a lot to give so I don't think it's worth sacrificing a unit that maybe you could have like some value just for stats when you can have an anomaly that does like the same gives like the same or even more stats uh and you're not sacrificing anything at all like i think like the the, the it, it just severely needs to be buffed unstoppable force is in the same boat where it just needs to be severely buffed 
unstoppable force is right here. Uh, on takedown, charge the next target and stun them for 1.5 seconds, and then heal 10% max health. Like, this isn't bad, it's just not very good. Like, I think, like, the stun is okay, but, like, 10% max health is really not that much, like, compared to some other stuff. Like, every time I took this, I just felt like it was doing kind of, like, it was kind of doing nothing. Because, like, it's fine in, like, a 1v1 case, kind of, or, like, on single target champions, but, like, even then, like, things get, like, so hectic late game that, like, you don't even notice this because like, it's one unit at a time and like the unit at your unit has to be changing targets so you basically it's on takedown but like it has to be on takedown of the unit that you're hitting because if you're hitting a, a different unit and like you're not you're not changing targets for this so sometimes like you get a takedown tech on the technicality like let's say you have like a shiv on your units you get a takedown but like it's some proc because it's not like the unit you're hitting like you're not there's no next targets because you're still hitting your current targets it's only when you are changing targets, so it's only when the unit that the unit that you're carry, that your unstoppable force unit is hitting, it's only when that unit dies. So it's not that good. And then yeah, this is just not enough. It's just bad. And the last two are like in the same category, so I'll talk about them. Uh, Arcana overwhelming and Avalanche farmer. This is pretty much this reads pretty much, gain fifty MR, gain fifty armor. This is such a small number in most cases that it's not even worth it and then even in the cases where it's something considerable you're not gonna grief your items or any, anything just to satisfy it uh so like you can take this on like something that has a lot of like armor and mr like a sentinel uh let's say you have six sentinel rel with like a lot of stuff you can in theory get a lot of things, but also why would you take a MR anomaly on Rel? Like at best, like let's say you have like 300 armor MR, you end up with 75 AP, which is pretty good, but you couldn't get that from other sources. And this is like a super, super niche scenario. You also wouldn't be anomalying Rel often than us. That's, I guess you use something that's a bit better. Like a Garen, that's a more main tankable. I guess because it's AD, you will go with the armor one. I launch of armor. Let's say you have 200 armor plus 50. So 250, you're getting like 60, 62 AD, which isn't a lot. I mean, I mean, it is a lot. The thing is, on these units, it doesn't matter that much. So it really comes to like who wants these anomalies, and it really doesn't come down to much. I guess you'd put it on like more bruisery, but like even then, you would just prefer other ones that give you more ad ap or more armor mr just depending on what you want even if you buff these ratios like you have to buff it considerably for it to be worth it but then i think once you get to that point it would be broken so i don't know where the middle ground is maybe 33 percent is like better like safer i don't know but the point is all right as of now it's not worth clicking on these yeah but fortunately there aren't that many of these that are like in the unclickable tier the rest are like the rest are pretty decent, and then you have some that are incredibly broken.